Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Today I had an awesome guy called Jonathan Shaw that came to podcast with me all the way from Tel Aviv in Israel. Very kind of him just to stop off and see me. Uh, we spoke about EdTech, so education technology, and he's the founder and CEO of an awesome company called Code Monkey. And Code Monkey are teaching kids how to code. Um, they start from eight years old and they use it in schools. So they're teaching teachers how to teach kids how to code using their, uh, their game online and, and using the app and stuff. Uh, it got bought by a Chinese firm recently and they're rolling it out in China. So uh, they're huge in America as well. So it's a really interesting company and we hear a little bit about its thoughts on education, on coding and on getting kids interested in coding. And of course, how he started his business. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Cool, and we're live. Jonathan, thank you very much for joining me Thanks on the for podcast. Sure. Pleasure. Thanks for coming all the way from Israel as well. Oh, my pleasure. Just for me. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is EdTech? So EdTech is short for education or educational technologies. Yeah, yeah, simple as that. Yeah, and that's like a recent cool term. Well, it's uh, I think the, the the specific name like word came up like recently, like maybe five or ten years ago. But actually, even I remember when growing up, we had like an hour week at school where we go to the computer lab and and play educational games. They just didn't have that word for them back then. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a new name for an old thing. Probably. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I played educational games at school when I was growing up. Probably. I remember we had our first Amstrad computer, or like the yeah, floppy disks. Yeah, yeah, the Commodore and the, the yeah, first yeah. Apple computers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they had math games, English games, you know, in Israel practicing English letters or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. What's, your, what's your story? So um, I've been coding from a very young age. Both, both my parents are software engineers, so we've been growing up like with the first Apple computers at home. Been writing lines of code since I was like probably eight or nine. Crazy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, love that. And th- that was fun, and and I did that with my young brother and my childhood friend, which ended up being my two co-founders at Code Monkey twenty years later. <laughs> so wow, <laughs> that's a pretty cool story. So you've known each other since you were like seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. The story is. Uh, after high school in Israel, uh, you go to the army, and if you don't do that, you usually go do like community service type of thing. Okay. I did education. I was building in a, in a development town in the south of Israel. So you uh, went for the community service route. Yeah, 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 and I did education. So uh, one of my initiatives was creating coding classes for kids, elementary school children, after school classes. And I came up with a gamified concept, creating like little puzzles for them to solve using code, and it was very successful. That was 2001. 13 years later, together with a childhood friend and my young brother, uh, we started a company out of it. Uh, Very cool. Called Code Monkey. Yeah. And you, um, <laughs> you went to university after the community service? Yeah, and we actually start, tried to start a company without my brother, uh, just me and the friend uh, Ishai in 2007, but it was too early. I, I guess the ad tech world wasn't there yet. VCs didn't care about that market still. Yeah, yeah. But in 2013, uh, it became like a, a big trend and my young brother also graduated from the Hebrew University with his computer science degree. He actually came up with a name, Code Monkey, with a specific code concept, uh. game concept of coding a monkey to catch bananas. And then, uh, and then three of you. Uh, yeah, and so what, what is Code Monkey, monkey exactly? So it's, it's an online uh, game-based platform for uh, teaching kids uh, the basics of computer science, coding, basically. Yeah. Fine. And for what, from like five Six. So we were doing like second grade to eighth, ninth grade, because the well, second grade that's like second a, grade, like eight years old, yeah, six, okay, uh, yeah. six, seven, eight. Like you, you, it used to be that you needed to be able to read because we were teaching real coding in a real programming language, like a Python, like a coffee script. It's called. That was special about CodeMonkey. It's not just the drag and drop puzzle that teach you how to think like a programmer. It's actual coding in an actual coding language, but it requires being comfortable with reading and writing English letters and, and, and basic words. So there was right. a bar. But we're now releasing first pre-readers app. Your yeah. first pre-reader. Yeah, the, the, the app for pre-readers. So we're going younger. We're going to kindergarten, actually, oh, with simple-based coding. So Is that coming. also in Python? 
Uh, no, so that would be like in just like symbols representing like specific commands. So it's not like a real programming language, but it teaches the concept of, you know, a sequence of commands, a loop, a variable, an object. Uh, so it's just the concept without any actual coding in a, you know, in yeah. a real world programming language. Nice. I need to get yeah. my daughter into that. Yeah, definitely. My yeah. oldest one's five. Yeah. My youngest one's two and a half. So five is perfect. Two and a half, I would wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to get on that. And is that, well, that and that's all online? Yeah. Everything's um, through the, uh, is it an app and the website? So the, the, the stuff for older kids is on the, is web-based. Uh, yeah. You can access from an iPad. You just go to playcodemonkey.com. The pre-readers app is called Code Monkey Junior, so you can just search it on the App Store or the Play Store. Yeah, yeah fine. And did, did you did you kind of identify that there was a, a problem in the classroom that they weren't being people kids weren't being taught coding well or at all? They weren't being taught coding on a large scale at all. It was only it was just a niche, like for like if you had people like academia people or or software engineers like my parents, so they would get you like into a coding summer camp or something. But but it wasn't something that was doing widespread. Uh, but the problem is more general, not just with coding. The problem is with schools and classroom becoming less and less appealing and relevant for kids nowadays. You know the the main place kids learn today uh, new stuff. Uh, is on YouTube actually? <laughs> really? Because yeah, my daughter is is not even two, but she knows how to get on on the YouTube app and and, wow. and search the the videos, and that's the way she learns about stuff. No, mine too. So yeah, yeah. and and a teacher using the old methods of you know uh, a blackboard and, a, <laughs> and yeah. a book, it's very hard to to have your student keep your student engaged to that. When on the other hand, they have all those you know apps and. But are you seeing are you seeing that the I mean, I think in the UK, I'm saying in my kids' school, they're, they're using like an interactive board, which yeah. is connected to the computer. And yeah, so that's, yeah, that's a step on, uh, in the way, the way I see it. Eventually, you, you have more and more learning being done self-paced, like self-serve, yeah. where a child can just choose the content that is interesting for him or her to learn online, and the teacher just acts as a facilitator. That way, you can also get more personalized learning, both in the subject areas that are interesting for each kid and, and in the pace, which is very critical, because yeah. you probably remember like the smart kids getting bored very quickly and, and the struggling kids getting lost very quickly you know so it will also allow more uh, what we call adaptive learning uh. and so there'll be do you think there'll be more more onus on on parents because you can't just leave your three-year-old to right. roam YouTube right yeah yeah right, right. And yeah that's well well so the so the internet and you know, it suggests also, you know, challenges and risks, obviously, for kids online. Code Monkey Studios and companies like us, the, they, they make sure that there's also, like, positive or, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. content available, uh, interactive content available. But, yeah, it is up to the parent or the educator to make sure that the kids get to the right content and, you know, not the bad content. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. are you finding that schools are, are kind of catching on to this or that although it's slow to adopt these types of things? Yeah, so schools, you know, school is, uh, public schools are, you know, government entities eventually, so they change slowly. But that's that's not always a bad thing. But yeah, if you think about it, classrooms today, you know, putting aside, you know, they sometimes use that, that interactive board, but teaching in classroom today is still being done exactly the same way or like give or take the same way it was done like here in London, like, I don't know, maybe six, yeah. 700 years ago, yeah, yeah. which is pretty <laughs> crazy because I know, I anything know. else changed dramatically. You know, the way we do business the day we consume content, read news, uh, you know, interact with each other, health, everything changed. So dram travel dramatically and education stayed the same. So so changes happen slow. Um, but but it's sometimes, sometimes, you know, it has good sides to it because it's a large system and it's yeah. a very complex system and it's a very critical, you know, and important system. You don't want, for example, you mentioned the risk of online content. You don't want all of that to go into all the classroom, you know, just one day and yeah, you know, yeah, it could be disastrous. Up. Yeah. Yeah. But what I found amazing with uh, even with podcasting and with YouTube is, is, you know, back in the day, even probably 50 years ago, you had to read to learn. Whereas nowadays you can you can listen or you can watch, and so in, in you know less developed countries where education isn't so so good, you just need a good internet connection now. Yeah, exactly. Which is I find amazing. Yeah, yeah. How how effective have you found Code Monkey to be? So it's it's uh, extremely effective put directly in front of children. So actually, the way that it is rolled out in Israel is not as a lesson or a curriculum. It's rolled out as a as a nationwide coding competition. Oh, and wow. we managed so how does to that get 
we managed to get to 75 percent of the students in our age groups in israel in just our second year of, of operation wow that's due to the fact that the game is is uh intuitive and highly engaging so the kids just need to play the teachers don't need to do anything except like you know make the kids aware of the option uh but there's only uh, a certain depth you can go using that method in terms of really teaching a craft teaching you know a subject a complex subject like computer science uh so if you want to go beyond you know the basic introduction or just teaching the basics you do need to get the teachers involved in understanding the concepts themselves the concepts that are more abstract and hard to explain yeah and that can only happen you know at a certain pace because you do need to to find the right teacher to train them uh, and it's a challenge because uh, if a teacher if an adult you know is is proficient in, in those kind of things sometimes they would choose working for a tech firm like Google sure. you know, or, or Amazon <laughs> yeah. probably make you know five times more <laughs> yeah yeah can you do like um, can you get um, like amazing developers to record videos like how to videos stuff like that we which had can then teach kids and we had uh, coders in Israel go to visit schools, actually, to inspire the children and, yeah. and to also help them ad hoc when they get stuck in the more, more advanced level of a code monkey. So we had that, like volunteers from, from large tech companies. And on videos, there's an organization called Code.org okay. in the United States. They are the main advocators of, of the importance of computer science education in, in K-12. Uh, they they record videos of yeah people like like celebrities like like yeah, Bill Gates coaches. you know but yeah. also like just like NBA players and, and people like that that yeah. you know yeah. just appealing to to young kids talking about specific concepts in computer yeah. science and how important it is and uh, so it's so pretty amazing that. if you're in school in Israel and like some rock star coder is basically yeah. teaching you via video yeah yeah it's yeah. Ma- amazing what yeah, you can do now yeah, yeah it is crazy crazy how how much time does it take these kids to to kind of grasp it and and learn. I mean, I guess it's yeah. a language like anything: French, English, right. to German yeah, to learn. It's definitely like a language. They get the basic mechanics like very quickly. You know, in the first lesson, <clears throat> the first forty-five minutes, they understand the concept that you know they have the place where they write the so they write the code on the on the right side of the screen, and they push the the play button, and the monkey uh, executes the command. They get that very quickly. In order to get to more abstract concept like let's say loops or arrays, variables. Then you know you leave about I don't know ten lessons something like that. That's quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty quick. And then so you you, you just talk, you talked about the the competition you did in schools. How did how did you go about actually getting schools and teachers to take this up and promote it to the kids? And the same five percent is like more than the people that turned out to vote for Brexit in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah, that's always a challenge just getting that. the word out. And and we were a small company. Uh, we always have been um, so it was always about creating the right partnerships for us so in Israel uh, SanDisk the, the, you know they, they do the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the the USB drives yeah. uh, the CEO found out about CodeMonkey was very enthusiastic about it and he assembled some other large tech firms in Israel hmm. they approached the government and that, that was the way we managed to get into almost every school they sent their volunteers the, from the tech firms uh, the Ministry of Education was was uh, orchestrating everything. Uh, that's in Israel, in the United States. So we used partnership with companies like Co.org, uh, the okay. nonprofit, yeah. uh, which are doing an amazing job in getting the word out uh, to to first to American schools and now globally. They ex- expanded globally. Amazing. Uh, so it's about creating in- the right partnerships. Yeah. In the UK, did anything happen? In the UK, so it's interesting. In the UK, the UK was, uh, I think, the first or the second country in the world to mandate computer science as part of the K-12 curriculum. Amazing. But it actually, so so you would think that would be like the first market for us, for a company like CodeMonkey, but it actually created like an opposite effect, I think, because since because it became mandatory, so the large curriculum providers who used to 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 sell like, like math and english curriculum to the school so they had to also now take the coding Evolving. box yeah so they just created something very simple and, and there we have now we also have coding we cover coding uh so it actually made this market less a bit more tricky uh, yeah, to get into a bit more tricky to get into for us yeah. yeah and then so once you got into the schools and would you approach like vc firms to get funding and um, yeah so it so so with VCs, it's a general purpose VC would not go into the education 
uh, space or business yeah. <clears throat> because it's so different, especially if you're selling to school. You, you, there's a difference between like consumer education, like lifelong education or just educational apps that parents download for their kids and selling curriculum to schools because when selling to schools, just think of the sales cycle. They only buy once a year, yeah. right? So that's that's very hard for a VC to track. Uh, yeah. Unless it's a VC that's dedicated to the school Didn't business, so you, and you don't have those in Israel yet, you have you have a few in the United States. So we we didn't take any VC money, but we were we were generating revenue very early from from the government uh, deal in Israel. Uh, so we were able to sort of self fund uh, the operation. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's great. I, I I know you mentioned that it's in the curriculum here, but it doesn't feel like in the UK we're we're quite as good or successful at tech and so forth and you guys are in Israel and America there's a lot of great tech startups that come out of, of Israel yeah definitely the startup nation yeah yeah, startup yeah. Nation. yeah. <laughs> yeah there, there's a good book <laughs> at, uh, with that title yeah it's funny it's a lot of people are trying to explain and, and you know to attribute uh, uh, that phenomena but one thing for sure because Israel is such a small market when you're starting a company in Israel, you're looking uh, at the global market from day one. From d- yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's very helpful in 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 generating in creating those you know international companies. Yeah, good international mindsets and exactly. Yeah, and then obviously you were very successful, and and the Chinese firm have recently bought the firm, and yeah, how yeah. how did that come about? And so actually, it started here in London. Uh, oh, my partner, f- my co-founder Ishai, he was presenting Code Monkey at the largest ad tech conference. I think that the largest it's the largest international conference, uh, and it takes place every year here in London. It's called uh, the Betcho B E T T. So we had like a Code Monkey stand, and just someone from Tal Education Group, uh, you know, yeah. approached and he gave the demo, <laughs> gave the pitch, oh, wow. uh, and that's when the relationship started very early on. It was the first year or the second year of the company. And they've been using our product since. They, they've been, you know, tinkering with, with creating like uh, coding classes. Their main business is in teaching. China. Yeah, their main business yeah. is teaching Chinese, English, and math. Right. Uh, but then they were making some attempts with coding, and then what? And that started like three or four years ago. But then the uh, the government in China started, t- like in the rest of the world, started taking computer science into the mandatory curriculum. So that's when they realized this is the time to move forward more aggressively with coding. And that's when they decided to buy Code Monkey Amazing. The company. Yeah. How did it How did it feel to kind of sell something that you dreamt about from eight years old? Yeah. <laughs> with your brother and your and your best mate. Yeah. Has it been difficult to? So uh, yeah, there's, there's an adjustment period, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's what's good about this specific acquisition is first we sold it to a, an education company. It's a it's an amazing story that it's it's a young company that the founder of Tal Education and they called ta- is, they called Tal Education yeah. Group TL yeah. is not much older than me. I think he's, he's in his early forties and he still controls the company even though it's a twenty billion or a company publicly listed <laughs> in wow. the New York Stock Exchange. So I actually had, you know, lunch with him uh, and he's a math tutor. It's just, you know, he was very successful <laughs> at, nice. at doing that. Uh, Still so teaching. it is, so it feels like, you know, it feels natural on the personal level. Yeah. In terms of, you know, the vision, they're very committed to the Code Monkey vision. They're running right. the Code Monkey business in China, but they're letting us continue be independent outside of China. Great. So it's like, you know, it, it's amazing. really nothing yeah. much changed uh, for me on a, daily and have they basis. kept are they, are they using the code monkey kind of name and brand in china yeah yeah they yeah. just translated the uh, the name to chinese but they even used like the same color the, the same brand logo yeah, yeah. characters yeah. yeah and have you found it kind of added some some interest or complexity now having kind of a board i guess and investors to meet with and yeah yeah that's different obviously but but it's actually less it's actually a more efficient structure because when when we were in independent startup i was uh investing so much of my time in you know searching for new investors and and re- managing the relation managing the relationship with the uh, different several existing shareholders and now with just one one owner that i need to deal with uh so it's actually it actually makes me put more we'll time into time. yeah into product and 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 go to market you know yeah the chinese market must be unbelievably big yeah I mean, the, yeah the appetite for it's learning amazing. and knowledge it's and amazing the it's a it's a different world i remember the first time going there to meet with them so I, like my partner Ishai was meeting them from early on but only when it became like 
you know, started talking about acquisition. So me and my brother started joining him on on those trips, and it's uh, it's it's a different world. It's amazing the way you know the the, the like supplemental private education is the main expense of of, uh, of a middle class family in oh, China. So, so, so rather than I mean rather than sending them to like um, they call them public schools, the free schools there. Yeah, day schools, public schools. The, yeah. yeah, all the school, all the day schools are public there. Like Fine. You, you can't have a private day school in China. Okay, but if you can afford to send them to a private school, so that's an after school. That's after school. Yeah, so oh. the kids they, like they learn from you know eight a.m. to eight p.m. Like they go and to the, the day school, school. and oh, they right. go back home just to have a quick lunch, and then they go to the after school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that on it hardcore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hardcore, but but it seems like you know they're enjoying it because the, the the after school since they are like for profit companies, they have to be competitive, so they make it so a how long real do you high have quality school? experience for the children. Yeah, it sounds great. So, yeah. so they finish school and then what's like two to four hours, I guess, or something after school to... They finish school, they go back home just for a short while and then the it's different from, you know, they need to enroll into different after school courses, sometimes with different yeah. after school providers, but but they spend, they, I think they, they, they get the major part of their education, uh, those who can afford it, but it's more and more uh, these days in China, you know, the growing middle class. They get the uh, the major part of their education in the after school centers. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Big pressure to <laughs> invest in your kids. Otherwise, they're gonna miss out. Yeah, yeah. And you have like four adults investing in each child because of the single child policy they had up until recently. Oh yeah, so that you got have scrapped. Both parents and and, yeah. and you know. Oh, the fun. And, the, and actually the, six adults. You know, because two grandfather, two grandmother, a mother and a father, all investing in the uh, yeah. The are you, future are you finding that that's single. That's where their money. That's where their money tends to go. Yeah, that's where the money tends to go. That's before you know vacations Holiday. or or gadgets or you know or cars or yeah yeah that's crazy. Is that the same in Israel? No, no. In Israel, it's totally different. In Israel, uh, you get most of your education for free from day schools. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean here it's a mix. It's a mix. We've got some good like, I think yeah, some good like state schools free schools public yeah. schools and then the private schools which are called public schools a bit confusing oh <laughs> um they are uh yeah i mean if you can afford to send your kid there yeah there's always this debate people have like do you send them to a private school or private school yeah yeah um but the after school clubs uh there's more and more but i think it sounds like china's way ahead yeah yeah in the after school business definitely oh yeah and also in implementing technology back to your first question about yeah. educational technologies <clears throat> so you go to those after school uh, centers and it's extremely advanced in the way that they use technology to run the class. It's all data driven. It's all they analyze performance of teachers, of students. They report to the parents because, you know, it's a business. It's it's uh, uh, a lot of money going through that. And, you know, for profit companies competing with each other. So they, they have to, to be innovative in order to, you know, to win the to win the clients crazy yeah, that's crazy yeah. from what age from very early i heard i heard about companies doing uh, english after school classes for chinese students starting at the age of three so <coughs> three yeah, yeah. man my five-year-old's like well far behind <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. we just it's funny we don't do that here even in, i mean a lot of scandinavian countries the kids don't even start school until seven right all right because right. they believe in in yeah. play and because they're yeah. kids and they should play yeah. and have fun and yeah. stuff yeah and i think but they're starting to be concerned about that as well in china i'm not an expert but i know that yeah. they, they recently uh, uh created uh an alternative path for getting into university not based only on exams scores oh, no. but also on uh, extracurricular activities like they have in you know in american college yeah uh, well, applications sports. so yeah. so uh, they're aware of 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 the importance and the, of the current lack of of uh presence for those type of of, of life skills yeah yeah so i think they're, they're they're adding those kind of you know options as well yeah interesting it just feels like there could be a lot of pressure on parents and kids to just you can't fall behind you've got to like get on this stuff and right like, yeah it's definitely very competitive yeah crazy great just circling back to how teachers are implementing and teaching kids about the about the programming are you are you providing also training to the teachers yeah a on good question yeah so so we are we, we gradually realized that there's only so far we can go without training the teachers uh, which was fine, which was great for the initial stage of just exposure, you know. 
uh, and raising awareness that to just the fact that coding is important and fun. But then, yeah, so now we're at the stage where we're sort of transitioning from a company just providing those fun basic games uh, to a company f- providing a full K-8 or even K-12 curriculum for computer science. And that involves also teacher training amazing definitely and do they and do they is it like mandatory that they use it or do you have to kind of convince let's say the teachers to use it in their lessons and uh so that's very different from country to country uh so actually in the uk it's mandatory uh but that's actually a market that we're not very active in uh in the united states so it goes state by state so okay. uh, i don't remember the exact numbers but a lot of states already already uh require students to have to complete at least one computer science course to in order to graduate from high school. <clears throat> but then we're catering to the younger ages, so there it's still mainly extracurricular, but it's gradually going there. Fine, fine. And are you finding that it's making teachers more effective at teaching coding and... The training? Yeah. Oh, that, well, yeah, definitely. Even if it's just like a half-day on-site training and then just the fact that they, they know they can contact us, Code Monkey, the Code Monkey team, yeah. when they run into a problem. Because uh, if you think of it, it's very scary. You need to teach a new subject and it's a subject that you yourself you know, uh, are still new to. So definitely the fact that they have that support and that basic training goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and do, you, do you just go up to a certain age group at the moment? Yeah, we're focused. So we were focused on second grade to eighth grade, and yeah. now we're expanding also to kindergarten and first grade. Yeah. Fine. And will you, will you go older as well? We don't have those plans right now, but Fine. we might. It's it's harder uh, to go uh, to the high school levels because that's where they have more specific requ- requirements, and they ah, okay. change from state to state and country to country. Right. You know, okay. they have specific exams, and you know, some teach JavaScript, some teach Python, some teach those subjects and other subjects. So then it's harder to 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 support that global operation that we have now okay. uh, if you have to go into those specifics in each you know in each location yeah do you find that the, the particular game you you teach them on is most effective for this for this age group yeah for yeah definitely for that age i think code monkey is the most effective solution and can yeah. can they learn any other way are there like supplementary? Yeah, yeah, of course. There are other products, other companies doing similar products. A lot of them, uh, they don't use what we call, what's called text-based coding, like coding in a real programming language uh, on those young ages. They only teach block-based coding, which means those block puzzles that you drag and drop oh, yeah, yeah. to create yeah. like uh, pseudocode, which block represents its equivalent, you know, command in a real programming language. Yeah. So that's what most of uh, the computing product use for those for the age group that we target. But we actually find that the fact that we teach real coding actually makes it more appealing to students, to kids, more engaging because they feel like that they're doing the real thing, you know, what the yeah, grown-ups yeah. do. And, you know, with our special, you know, game design and special technology, we managed to create that experience even, you know, not harder, not more complex. We do a lot in uh, automatic feedback uh, to the learner. So when they type something wrong, our system automatically suggests a correction, you know, like when you're searching on Google, oh, like did on, you mean that? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, so it's more engaging and at the same time, it's not harder. It's, it's as intuitive, yeah. as easy. Yeah. Are you finding boys and girls are equally as interested at this age? On Code Monkey, yes. We're not allowed to ask, you know, uh, because of online safety, you know, uh, what, what online sex? childy child child. Uh, it's called COPA in the United States Childhood Online Privacy Protection okay. Act. So we need to be very careful. We don't uh, we don't take the personal details of our users, not even the full name. Uh, but we have statistics based on, you know, Google Analytics that say tell the gender, you know, approximately. And, and it's a 50-50 split on Code Monkey between boys and girls. Oh, that's right. great. And so, so you're not allowed to take really any data? Any data, any personal data. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's very So you can important. just measure, I guess, how effective people are at the games yeah. and coding and the teacher heck, they can they have the data they know yeah, that yeah. user you know ly17 they know yeah. it's that boy or girl and they can you know but but yeah. we're not allowed to to have the personal data okay fine interesting well, great to speak to you yeah hi, thank bye. you Thanks thank you very much me. coming in <laughs> it was interesting. Um, good luck with everything thank you um how can people find you so it's code monkey so yeah playcodemonkey.com is yeah. the url or you just google code monkey one word and if you're on the app store or play store so it's code monkey jr
Awesome. And I'm going to actually do it because my coding's rubbish. I missed that when I was young. (laughs) Let me know what you thought. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. See ya. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Thank you.